Welcome to my review of the latest controversial comic book movie. Joker is directed by Todd Phillips and stars Joaquin Phoenix as Arthur Fleck, a man who feels disregarded by everyone around him. He works as a sign twirler. He points people towards deals dressed up like a clown. He lives in a ratty old apartment with his sick mother. He's often beaten up on the streets. And because of all this, his world slowly begins to crumble and he finds himself being pushed towards violence. There has been so much talk and discourse surrounding this movie, and all of it has been a joy. I've loved every minute of it, all of the takes. It's been so great. The Joker is my favorite comic book villain ever, so automatically I have a bit of a bias. But in films past, as you know, whenever that character was involved with the movie, Batman was also there, so there was a good and evil presence. Now we're just focusing on this person and his origin. And at first I was a little adverse to that because I love the idea of the Joker not really having an origin. I love him being a constant. The idea that he has just always been this way and his past is so murky that he's even more terrifying. Nolan understood that pretty well with his Dark Knight film. But that's not to say that that origin has never been explored in comics before. And so I opened myself up to this idea and I loved this film. I think it is wonderful. Joaquin Phoenix, in particular, is mesmerizing. Everything I had heard about his performance is true, and yet he somehow still surprised me. He is deserving of an Oscar nomination based off of the other performances that I've seen so far in 2019. The film leans very heavily into this being a character that is downtrodden in life. You do feel sympathy for him because you understand just how shitty his life has been based off of this portrayal. And that could be dangerous. You could fall into being a bit sappy or syrupy, you know, asking for too much sentimentality for this guy, making you feel sorry for him constantly. But Joaquin Phoenix and his performance treads that line really beautifully. Because even when you feel like, damn, I feel bad for you because your life is such shit, you also see this brewing darkness behind his eyes where you, you no longer feel bad for him. You actually are getting scared of this guy. And it is a very realistic and probable portrayal of how somebody might become somebody like the Joker. You understand why he decides to choose a life of crime over anything else because life has never really given him something else to live for. And just when he thought there could be no other Joker laugh or another take at this laugh, Phoenix once again surprises with something that feels painful. Like there are times where he's laughing and then you can tell that his throat catches and he starts coughing and he holds his chest like laughing this hard is actually physically painful for him. And I thought that was fucking brilliant. Such a great idea. Like, I'm not going to get into the compare game because that's just pointless. Plus, I've only seen this movie once. But this is definitely able to stand side by side with what Ledger did. Ledger is iconic, and that performance will never be outdone, in my opinion. But what Phoenix does here is wholly his own. It feels unique to him. It feels like something only he could do. And his work as Joker is fierce and ferocious. He eats the screen every single time he's in frame, which thankfully is quite often. It's also really well shot. The cinematography, the color palette, beautiful, gorgeous movie, doesn't feel like a comic book film, feels like a drama because it is a drama. I wouldn't even really call this a thriller. This is absolutely a character study. And its inspirations are very obvious if you've seen any of Scorsese's films, namely the two behind me, King of Comedy and Taxi Driver. I mean, they've cast Robert De Niro as a talk show host in this movie, and I don't think that was a mistake. That is one of my biggest issues with the movie. It is very inspired by the blueprint of Taxi Driver. There are key visuals in the film that feel like they are taken from Taxi Driver. There are direct visual nods and hints to Taxi Driver and King of Comedy. There is just a little bit too much of that. It's not that this film doesn't feel like its own thing, and it's not like the movie is a copy and paste or anything. It's certainly its own film, breathed to life wonderfully by what Joaquin Phoenix is doing on screen. But you can't escape the fact that it is absolutely inspired by those films that came before it, which all films are inspired by something, obviously. 
It's just that in the case of this movie, it's a little more obvious. One of the biggest challenges with a film like this is taking a character who is turning towards evil and having him be the protagonist. How do you carry a character like this throughout the whole movie without having that good person like Batman to come in and say, hey, this is wrong. You're gonna be in a padded cell forever. But I think at the same time, the lack of a heroic character is what makes this film special because it makes the audience ask some hard questions. Questions like, what role do we play in creating the Joker? The person who does something horrible in the world. Do we have a cog in that wheel? Are we part of that system? Is there a way in which we've contributed to this, even though we're not the ones pulling the trigger? The fact that a comic book movie is asking harsh questions like this is really great. The score also is super haunting and really chilling, and it's minimal to the point where it doesn't feel like it's overstaying its welcome. It never feels like it's becoming more than what it should be. It just feels like that great addition to some of the more creepy scenes that really help you feel that this guy is slowly becoming unhinged. Some people have addressed concerns that this film perhaps glorifies violence or condones violence or makes you feel sympathy for this character and makes you understand and even side with him when he does horrible things. Those are valid concerns and I understand those concerns. The problem that I have with them is that that is the Joker character. The Joker character looks at the world, thinks it's hilariously hypocritical, and uses violence to point that out. I mean, The Dark Knight came out in 2008, and we had that great hospital scene where the Joker's looking at Two-Face, and he's like, uh, if I tell the press that like a gangbanger will get shot, uh, nobody panics. But if I say that one little old mayor will die, well, then everyone loses their minds! That's the character. And this is not a surprise to me that we're seeing a portrayal of the Joker. I, I feel like people forgot that the Joker is a fucking mass murdering sociopath. Like, did... What were they expecting? He was gonna, like, tickle people to death? Also, I feel like people who are concerned about the violence in this movie haven't watched movies. Taxi Driver came out in the 70s, for God's sakes, and that was very controversial. I mean, I wasn't there, but I've read plenty of reviews from that era, and people were very concerned about the way it depicts uh, Travis Bickle, and that you kind of side with him and understand why he loses his fucking mind. This is not something that's uncommon in films. A character who goes off the deep end and kills people, this is something that we've examined in films and documentaries for decades. There's a reason why there's so many documentaries about the Zodiac Killer or various murderers on Netflix. People are fascinated by what would bring someone to this point. And after the discussion I heard about the movie's level of violence, I was expecting it to be a lot more graphic than it is. If you were bothered by this film, you would never get through Martyrs. Like, that's a violent movie. This film is not even as violent as Deadpool. That's just like a fact. It's just taken more seriously, and so people are bothered by it. The last thing I'll say about this controversy, and, and keep in mind, I've never made a single tweet about this, Facebook post, nothing. This is the only time I've ever discussed this. That's why I'm talking about this. People have not seen this movie, and they've been talking about this controversy for months now, okay? So, like, I, I've been holding it inside. In regards to the main criticism, does this movie condone violence? Is it siding with a mass murderer? No, I don't think it condones violence. I just think it's depicting it. I think we are seeing a portrayal of how someone might lose it and do horrible things and choose that. It's not saying, hey, this is the route to happiness. It's saying, careful, because this could be how it ends up. That's all. And I think the fact that we're having this discussion at all about a comic book film is really great. Now, granted, this movie isn't flawless or anything, but I would rather watch a movie like this over some of the more throwaway, disposable superhero films that are entertaining while you're watching them, but are you really thinking about it afterwards? Sometimes, sure. Sometimes there's really great ones, like Thor Ragnarok, or the first Iron Man, or uh, Avengers Endgame and all that shit. You know, those are good movies. They're fun to watch, but 
you know, I'm actually thinking about shit after this movie. It's, I sat around with my friends afterwards and we fucking talked for like two hours about the film. And that's saying something. So with Joaquin Phoenix's excellent performance, Todd Phillips and his sure hand behind the camera, the gorgeous cinematography, the great score, this is a really good movie. I wish it didn't follow the blueprint of Taxi Driver to such a T, but nevertheless, I think this is the best version of a Joker origin story we could have gotten in a film. It doesn't follow everything about the comics, and that's fine. I like that it's different. I like that it takes liberties all good adaptations should. You should not follow the, the source material to such scrutiny that there's no surprises, there's no originality, there's no voice. And this movie has all of those. I'm gonna give Joker an A minus. I was riveted by this movie from just about start to finish. I think it's really, really good. And time will tell on its impact and whether or not it was really worth all this fuss. More than likely it wasn't. And in about a year, or with the way time goes now, in about three months, we'll be on to the next thing. But for now, this is the current film controversy, and I'm very curious to see how this plays out. I'm also very excited for you guys to see the movie, and I hope you enjoy it. So thank you very much, as always, for watching. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.